Hi, and good morning. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister, Three Congregations in Eastern Ontario. And thank you for joining us for our children's story this week. And we have another story from Woodland Tales, and it's about little Robbie, he's a raccoon. So it's little Robbie out of the darkness. So it is a rather sad story, but it does have a happy ending. Robbie Raccoon, as you can see, is a very young raccoon and his parents were great. I have his mother right here. So you can see her too. And she's really good. And they loved Robbie. And they spent hours, well, at least that's how it seemed to little Robbie. They spent hours playing with him. They'd throw him things for him to catch. They pretend to march all around up and down. This, you know, follow the leader type of activity. And they'd laugh a lot, especially when he fell and had to climb back up something. And they spend a lot of time just singing. Robbie had lots of friends. Because I think a lot of people like to be around people who are happy. And there were other raccoons and other woodland animals. And they'd all sort of run around, chase each other. They'd play tag. They'd steal things from one another because that's what raccoons do. It was lots of fun. And they laughed a lot. And sometimes Robbie would come home laughing so hard that it was hard to tell his parents what had happened, what was so funny. But one day, all that changed. Yes. His dad didn't come home. And little Robbie and his mother was crying. So little Robbie asked what happened. And his mother said, your dad forgot to watch the cars and he got hit and died. And she gave him a great big hug, just held him really, really close. Well, little, little Robbie didn't understand what was going on. He was very, very young. He'd never seen a car. He didn't know what it was. He didn't know why he had to watch for them. But he did, and he didn't know what it was to die. But he did know things changed every suddenly, completely. His mother told him that he had to start looking for his own food. He may not be quite old enough, but he was the oldest. He had to look, find something to eat. He'd been trained enough. The rest he'd have to learn on his own. She didn't talk much to him at all. He was always sad. And you know what? After that well, first hug, she didn't even hug him anymore. It was like she was doing everything she could to avoid him. There was no time for play. And little Robbie was always hungry and sad. Well, one day he was busy looking for berries to eat and he saw his friends playing in a field. He wanted to join them so badly, but he didn't remember how to play and he was hungry. So he went back to picking berries. But his friends had seen him and they'd even waited a minute so he could join them. And when he didn't join them, they just sort of scratched their heads and went back to playing. And they went home and they told their parents, they said, you know, now that Robbie's working, he doesn't have time for us anymore. He doesn't play, he doesn't laugh, he doesn't smile. Does he think he's too good for us? But their parents realized that something bad was going on and that Robbie and his mom needed help. So a few days later, there's a knock on the door. What's going on? And when Robbie's mother went to open it, she found all of Robbie's friends and their parents and her friends. And they'd all come with food and toys and just gave her lots of hugs. And someone had even brought a harmonica to play so they could start singing. Well, I wish I could say that they lived happily ever after, but they didn't. It took a long time. But gradually, Robbie and his mom were able to touch and hug again. And gradually, they were able to smile and laugh and enjoy being around friends again. That's a pretty good story. Thank you.
Gonna put them down. Bad things happen in life. And sometimes they affect us in ways we can't imagine. When bad things happen, we tend to retreat within ourselves. We're like a turtle hiding in its shell. And you know, that's okay. It's okay to be sad and it's okay to want to be alone by yourself for a while to sort of hide. But sometimes we're alone for so long that we actually forget what it's like to be around people. We forget what it's like to be happy. The pandemic has been one of those bad things that happen. And we've been forced to be alone a lot. And our world has really gotten smaller. It's gotten bigger on the computer, Zoom and all that stuff. But outside with friends, it's gotten smaller. In some ways, we're just like little Robbie and his mother who got used to being on their own so that they forgot what it was like to be around friends. The pandemic's still here, but you know we can wear masks, we can be vaccinated, we can get back to some kind of, of a normal life, living the way it should be. But we're nervous. We're not used to being around people. And maybe we're even scared to be around people. Well, just like it did for little Robbie and his mom, it's going to take us time too. But we'll get back to it. In the Bible, Jesus talks about light and darkness. In fact, he says that he's the light of, of the world and he's the light. He can bring light into darkness in our lives. He's the one that gives us hope. It's amazing that sometimes we're in a very dark place. We're afraid, we're alone, we're depressed. And something happens and it's like a light goes off. And we're filled with joy. Someone reaches out to us. There's a beautiful sunset or clouds. We hear music that we love. Someone smiles at us at just the right time. And we find ourselves filled with light and hope and life. Life is good. And God means it to be good. With God and Jesus in the picture, we can be sure that it will all work out. But remember, little Robbie, he didn't understand what was going on. It was friends that saw and helped. And sometimes we do need to reach out to others to help, for help, to tell them what's going on or what we're afraid of, or sometimes just reaching out to God for help too. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us family and friends. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being there when we need help. And thank you for giving us hope and light when we have our dark days. Jesus, help us to be a friend of others. Help us to be there when they need us. And help us to give hope and light to others when they have their dark days. Thank you, Jesus, for listening to us. Amen. And thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the story. So once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, wishing you all a very blessed week. Take care and God bless.